Good morning, friends. We're gonna be taking the cattle back to the heavy use area. We're gonna do some blood testing today. Check pregnancies on the cows. We have to run them back to the barn. It's about a half a mile. do it in a step process you can see the cows are over here on the other side of that fence we're gonna take them out this gate here because so we have to bring them out of that gate and pen them right here by penning them you try and run the whole herd up up if you try to bring a group through here Half of them will come through and then the other half will cut back up the edge of the fence line and you only get half the cows. What we're going to do is we're going to pen them here and then we're going to run them back to the heavy use area. Usually we have success. We're going to take them back, do the blood testing and... Uh... Come on girls. I'm not getting any volunteers. There we go. Now I'll slip up along this fence line here to help prevent anybody from coming back. Hopefully they stop there. Maybe they're going to. We'll get the whole group into that pen. Then we'll open it up and let them run back to the animal trails and walkways that we set earlier. The soils are a little wet here today. So we had rain just about all day yesterday and we had snow last night. So the soils are pretty saturated. So what we'll do is in long runs like this, Instead of letting the cows in a calf out already, because we'll set an alleyway. That way they're not running across the whole field and, and causing any damage to the field. I'd rather them cause a little bit of damage on a smaller piece of area than to spread that area out. Now hopefully he finds his way back in because it could be challenging if he doesn't. There they go. As simple as that. Tub, tub, that'll do. Come, come. Mutt scout, that'll do. Good boy. Good boy, tub. Mutt scout. Well, that worked out pretty good. If we wouldn't have had that pen out at the other end, come on, scout. It's one of those deals that I've talked about before. You prepare for the worst and hope for the best. And doing that. You know, setting that little extra piece of, of wire, a little run, and penning them out at the end is what made that move successful. Because I know that there would have been a few that cut back. and The calf, he slipped back in, which I'm surprised. I never make those fences hot, or our alleyways hot, but that one there, today, I made it hot. We do our pregnancy testing via blood. So we're going to take blood out of the tail head. It's pretty quick, simple, easy. It's not as invasive as palpating the cows, which I don't like. And palpation here in my area is pretty expensive. You have to pay for a vet call. On top of that, 
vet call you have to pay eight dollars a head to have him or her whichever vet we get and give you your pregnancy results which in my opinion cost too much i believe for us to blood test our cattle it cost approximately two dollars and 95 cents a head plus the testing supplies the testing supplies are about around 15 cents for the blood vial and about 15 cents for the syringe that we use I draw the blood with a syringe and then I'll transfer it over into a blood tube. Here in a few minutes when Mama and Emmy get down here, we're going to get these girls caught in our headlocks. We used to have a chute and all that fancy stuff with a tub shoe, squeeze chute on it and, and, a, and an alleyway and we found that handling the livestock in this fashion here actually is less stress on them and it's a lot faster for us so this is the method we prefer if we can get everybody in the headlocks we can get it through and we can blood test i think this year we're blood testing 58 and blood testing those girls we can blood test those 58 head in a, less than an hour and it used to be if we had to run them through the chute individually blood testing them it would take us about four to five hours and the headlocks that we're using i think there's 135 heads that can be locked into these headlocks that we have the headlocks cost a lot less than what the the chute system that we had that i always hated Just, seemed like it was it caused a lot more stress on the cattle it's a lot harder to work to cattle and one reason that that could be so hard for us it was so hard for us to use that shoot system our cattle are pretty quiet and those cows didn't want to go through the the alleyways and, and stuff I found that the crate the crazy ones I guess you could say those are the ones that went through the shoot system pretty easily this is the way we do it now and uh, I prefer this method over the chute system. We kept our chute system for two years after we put the headlocks in just to make sure we wouldn't need it. And I haven't had a use for it in seven years now. Doing what we're doing, the cattle are a lot healthier. The vet doesn't vit or visit our farm at all for the cows anymore. Knock on wood. Okay friends, <clears throat> we're about ready to start drawing blood on these cows. We got everybody but three, and that's usual. And they may go in by the time we need them. The cows are gonna be in for a day or two, so it really doesn't matter. We'll keep them split off until we can get the blood drawn on them. You can see the girls are all in. They're eating that nasty old hay, which I don't like. And a lot of times they don't like it either. But we're gonna get started here and and get her done. Watch that. Okay, for this process, we need three CC syringes, a 20 gauge needle, one inch. If you get any longer than that, the blood clots the needle up and it won't, you can't draw blood with it. And then we use red top tubes and we have about three different kinds there in the bucket it really doesn't matter as long as they're red top and we need two two cc's of blood in order to do this test they've done it they've actually been able to do the test for us with less than two cc's and it's been successful so what we do <coughs> what my tube. You can't get another one, or you? I got it. What's the number of the cow? Here. I don't know what her number is. Walker, what's that calf's number? Right here. Why? The tail up. Just gonna dance around a little bit. You look, okay, you flip the tail up. You look for the V. 
There we go. Number one. White. One W. Amy, can you hand syringes to me? I'm and you give him a new one. Yep. Why don't you just give it to me without the cap? Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't think that one's pregnant. That one there's a steer. This one is 5036. What's that one? You can't see it. Okay, let that get into a dinner hole. A calm stand on the other side of them. You put pressure. AI'd always stood better. We don't AI them anymore. Thank you, my princess. You're welcome. I, I think she's an A. A135. Yeah, just keep an eye on her, bud. That's a steer. Okay, hey friends, that's all there is to taking blood samples out of 60 head of animals. According to the camera, we've been filming for 32 minutes and 19 seconds, and that includes all the camera work we did. So it's not that difficult, less than 30 seconds a piece. So um, it's 
something that we do every year. I know a lot of folks don't agree with me. It can make some pretty major management decisions for us because we know whether or not to call those cows or to keep them or to try and sell them as beef or, or whatever and we're not feeding them because it costs a lot of money to feed cattle through the winter as we all know. So just a little video for you. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it.